Okay, so look, I'm gonna level with you here. This video is going to be wall-to-wall -wall Mr. Freeze puns. Sound cool? <sighs> Great. Then let's talk Ice Ages. The way people talk about the Ice Age, you might be forgiven for thinking that planet Earth once went through one massive period of extreme cold. But the truth is that Earth has weathered not just one or two, but five known Ice Ages. Very nice. Thanks to scientists who studied climate data contained in geological features, ancient sediments, and ice cores pulled from frozen landscapes, we actually have a pretty good idea of when these various ice ages occurred. The oldest we know about happened in the planet's deep past, about 2 billion years ago. That one lasted for 300 million years. The most recent ice age began roughly 2.6 million years ago and reached its peak an estimated 20,000 years ago, which is basically 10 minutes ago in the grand scheme of Earth's lifespan. And here's the really crazy thing. Technically, we're still in that ice age today. All right, everyone, chill. Albeit in a so-called interglacial period where things aren't quite as cold as they could be. In fact, scientific data shows that Earth has warmed up pretty considerably in the last 20 millennia or so, and pretty very considerably in the last 100 years. You hear ice age and you think of an age that is, well, icy, but that's more of a clever marketing ploy. It wasn't all cold all the time, but climate trends are much more complicated than that, and climatologically speaking, ice ages contained multitudes. Data shows that ice ages have periods in which the temperature warms up and glaciers retreat a bit. This is called interglacials. Meanwhile, the periods in which the cold weather ramps back up and the glaciers begin to creep forward are known as, you guessed it, glacials. The Iceman cometh. Local temperatures can also vary by significant amount. During the peak of the last ice age, about 20,000 years ago, average global temperatures were 10 degrees Fahrenheit lower than today's average. However, local temperatures in some regions were up to 40 degrees lower. Popular depictions of the most recent ice age tend to make everything look pretty barren. Let's consider the modern Arctic, though. Here, you're likely to be surrounded by seemingly endless and empty expanses of ice, but take a closer look and you'll find plenty of life. And the same was true for Earth during its ice ages. For one thing, as we now know, these periods didn't really encase the planet in one huge sheet of ice. Neither was it always bitterly cold, as evidence of glacial melting and refreezing makes clear. That means there were a range of environments for living creatures to thrive in, even if the average global temperature was relatively cold. Not only that, but plenty of animals did just fine in frozen environments. Some even thrived in the cool temperatures. Megafauna, such as woolly mammoths, short-faced bears, and steppe bison did quite well in the cold but not all of them. Don't get ahead of me, it'll all make sense in a sec. Overall, these large animals were particularly well adapted to moving around tundras. It's pretty telling that when forests became dominant in many warming ecosystems, some of these megafauna appear to have been pushed out. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! Putting aside the good doctor's total misunderstanding of prehistory for a moment, the last Ice Age actually did kill a whole lot of megafauna. Not dinosaurs, no, but woolly mammoths, cave bears, saber-toothed cats, and so on. I know this sounds contradictory from the earlier parts, but some of them survived. The cold did kill off a bunch of megafauna because it's still cold. This will make more sense in a few, I promise. But anyway, there was a time when scientists believed that humans were to blame for this mass extinction event. This is known as the overkill hypothesis, but it's not the whole story. While humans wielding weapons didn't help things, the fall of large Ice Age mammals actually does come down to a complicated mix of factors. A 2021 paper published in Nature Communications found that there was no significant long-term relationship between human and megafauna populations in late Ice Age North America, though there had been an estimated 80% drop in the number of large animal species by 11,700 years ago. Climate evidence and statistical modeling indicates that dips in temperature led to dense and large animal numbers. An earlier study published in Nature Communications backs this up with on-the-scene evidence from Ice Age Texas, where a cold period was linked to a noticeable drop in plant and animal diversity. But while plants in the area of Hall's Cave appeared to recover when things got warmer during the Holocene, the megafauna in the area stayed gone. So while humans aren't off the hook entirely for the loss of these species, we're not solely to blame. Pat yourself on the back for that one. It was climate change all by itself. Wow, that's ironic. An ice age sounds like a pretty big deal, don't you think? Some of the more fantastical takes on the idea may lead you to believe that the entire planet was once plunged into a deep freeze. Hell, 
Do a bit of digging and you'll even find actual scientists referring to a snowball Earth. So that must mean at least one of the ice ages on our planet's history turned the place into a popsicle, right? Tonight, hell freezes over. Well, not exactly. Yes, there's good evidence that a runaway cooling effect chilled the Earth multiple times, with two of the most major glaciation events occurring during the aptly named Cryogenian period 720 to 635 million years ago. During the coldest periods, glaciers crept across much of the planet, but not quite all of it. A 2023 study showed that there were plenty of oxygen-imbibing organisms living in a surprisingly wide zone around the equator during the Marinoan Ice Age, some 654 to 635 million years ago. If the planet had been fully encased in ice back then, oxygen would have been in short supply in the oceans, and there would have been less diversity and fewer life forms overall. Instead, the study's authors found that there were actually vast areas of open ocean that teemed with life. As such, some scientists have argued that it might be better to think of these periods as a kind of slushball Earth, even if that doesn't quite play so well with sci-fi novelists. People don't tend to think of glaciers as particularly fast-moving, so it stands to reason that ice ages are pretty slow-going too. After all, it's not like freezing temperatures can chase you down a hallway like they inexplicably did in The Day After Tomorrow. Close the door! Except they kinda can. Okay, not like that, but variations in global temperatures can happen over short time spans. We're talking decades here, which really is nothing when it comes to time. In one instance, when the most recent glacial period was beginning to wane about 12,800 years ago, temperatures took a sudden and unexpected nosedive. Then, just 1,300 years after that, some regions saw average temperatures rise by as much as 20 degrees Fahrenheit over only a few years. So what causes these relatively sudden climate swings? Some scientists have suggested that changes in the sun's output might have something to do with it, or perhaps shifts in ocean currents caused by melting freshwater glaciers. Others have noted that a wide array of incremental changes may build up and reach a sudden breaking point, causing the climate to change suddenly and rapidly. When it's winter, cold temperatures and bad weather often force you to stay inside. My condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. <laughs> But the humans who were around during the most recent ice age weren't so content to hang tight. Somewhere between 70,000 and 60,000 years ago, ancient humans moved out of the relatively comfortable climate of eastern Africa and started putting up stakes just about anywhere they could. This included moving through territory occupied by Neanderthals and even beyond into the world's icy glacier-locked regions. Our species was very much on the move, ice age be damned. The latest ice age actually made travel quite a bit easier for some members of Homo sapiens as glaciers took up water, causing sea levels to dip and land bridges to appear between once distant regions. This includes the land bridges that may have allowed humans to cross from Siberia to North America. The exact timing of that crossing and how it really happened is still hotly debated. For example, we're not sure whether humans hoofed it, paddled along shores and boats, or took to the open sea. However it happened though, emerging evidence suggests that humans made it to the Americas as early as 20,000 years ago, just as the Ice Age was loosening its grip on the planet. Ice Age humans weren't brutish or stupid, no matter how much pop culture might try to convince you otherwise. Sure, the image of a grunting human stumbling out of a cave and waving a club might make us feel good by comparison, but the truth is, well, we should probably find a better way to feel good about ourselves. Ancient humans were still Homo sapiens, just as we are today, so they came with the same complex capabilities for problem solving and art making. Archaeologists have uncovered evidence of burials from the end of the last glacial period. These grave sites were full of finely made items such as beads, and the dead were clearly laid to rest with great care by the living. Excavations have also revealed what appeared to be temples and ritual objects, like those at everybody's favorite lost technology location, Gobekli Tepe. That's in modern Turkey if you're not familiar with the story. It's this ancient site that contains hundreds of pillars covered in carvings. The site itself is about 12,000 years old, but it didn't spring out of nowhere. Evidence like this suggests that these people lived full and intricate spiritual lives, which later set the stage for Neolithic monuments like Gobekli Tepe. Ice Age peoples were also well-versed in all kinds of art forms. Cave paintings are among the most famous of these, but archaeologists have also found carved objects of figures like women, animals, and a lion-headed figure that's estimated to be 40,000 years old. Although we're the only hominids living today, our species wasn't quite as lonely during the last ice age. 
For a while, Homo sapiens were alive at the same time as many of our close relatives, including Neanderthals, Homo erectus, and Denisovans. Some of the hominids who faced the Ice Age were pretty well suited to cold climates. Compared to modern humans, Neanderthal people were shorter and broader, with wide nasal openings and short limbs. Being more compact may have helped them retain body heat, though some scientists suggest this body type may be the result of random genetic happenstance rather than environmental pressures. Of course, hominids could also have struggled in Ice Age climates. Significant drop-offs in Neanderthal populations have been linked to a one-two punch of cold-dry periods around 44,000 and 40,800 years ago, according to a 2018 study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. As the environment around them changed, Neanderthals may have failed to adapt in time, opening them up to other pressures that eventually contributed to their extinction. As the last glacial period wore on, things began to look pretty bad for the Neanderthals. Though their stocky bodies may have helped them endure the cold, they began to suffer a serious decline due to freezing climates in their European homelands. Let's kick some ice. Add the migration of the humans to the mix, as well as any violent competition that might have occurred as a result, and you've got a recipe for disaster. Well, that all sounds dramatic, but it's not quite true. If you analyze your genome, you might just find evidence of Neanderthal ancestors who got pretty cozy with their Homo sapien pals. Genetic analysis indicates that today, non-African people may find up to 4% of their DNA comes from Neanderthals. That figure may have been as high as 9% for humans living around 40,000 years ago. So while we can't rule out competition between humans and Neanderthals during the last ice age, it's obvious that at least some of them mingled and bred. And although time has clearly not been kind to Neanderthals, this evidence of interbreeding suggests that their legacy lives on today.